Hey friends, Phil here, and it's been a minute since we've put out a brand new course. We've been doing a lot of preparation for new classes, updates to existing classes, all of which you get as a member of videoschool.com. But today we are so excited to be launching a brand new course on shorts, reels, and stories. So if you are on YouTube, or Instagram, you know, or TikTok, you know that shorts and reels are the new video format that these platforms are prioritizing for growing your channel and brand. Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, they want you to be creating short form video content, vertical video content. And that's something we haven't tackled in a course before. And so I'm super excited to be partnering with the master at this, Dan Britton, who has an amazing YouTube Academy. He's put out some amazing courses, has a lot of real world experience doing this himself. And we've put out the Shorts Film School, which launches today. So you can see it here on Udemy and at any point if you want to watch a free preview or get um, at during launch week, 90% off, only $9.99, you can enroll in the class. I'll leave the link below to go through to get that deal. But basically, I wanted to just talk a little bit more about this class. Uh, so you can see an example of what we're going to be creating here. Dan is a creator based in Thailand. And for this class, we put together a mock channel on street food, which is super cool. So you're gonna learn how to do all of this, but more than just the technical aspect of like, this isn't a class where we're just like, here's how you open the app, here's how you upload a video to Instagram Reels. It's more about the behind the scenes, the theory of creating great shorts and stories. What's going to make a great short? What's going to make a great story that captivates your audience, that connects with your audience? And why are we even doing this in the first place? We tackle both shorts, which will we basically call any video that's a vertical short form video on any of these platforms. And then we also tackle stories, which is a separate element, but sort of related to shorts. And together you can use them to really blow up your own social media channels. So Here's the class, we talk about equipment that you need, we talk about planning and research, we then talk about how each platform is different in terms of uh, what we're making for each platform. Then we actually go through and we make the whole video, we have several examples, but you make the video and you're gonna see the entire process from filming and editing to uploading. And that is where, if you're not familiar with TikTok or Instagram or YouTube Shorts, we'll show you the apps and how to actually upload them. And one of the best things is that we're teaching you how to make content that you can repurpose across platforms because no one wants to be going out filming a separate video for each of these platforms. We show you how to make it and then be able to use it on all of these platforms and upload um, straight to all of these platforms after you make one great short and then we talk about stories and how you can use stories to grow your connection with your audience, your community, your fans, build those fans up, and so much more. So um, there's so much into this class. I'm going to play the first couple of videos of this class, which are an overview of the key video formats for all social media platforms and then our channel for this course. So it gives you a sense of what this course is all about, what we're going to be teaching. And from there, you can kind of get a sense of if you want to take this course or not. And as I mentioned, you can get a $9.99 deal coupon below in the link of this video and try it out. With all of our courses, it's a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's really no risk in just enrolling and seeing if you like it. Uh, we don't make these courses to charge an arm and a leg. We make them so that we can help creators like you learn new creative skills. And this is one that it's doing shorts, reels, stories. It's one of those things that as a creator, I'm not even that excited about having to do it. But once you learn how that it can help you grow your presence, grow your connection with your, your audience, and you realize that this is the format that all of these social media companies are pushing, even YouTube right now, 
you kind of have to jump on the bandwagon and do it a little bit. So why not make it easy and fun? And that's what this course is all about. So I'm going to pass it on to Dan, who's going to cover the next couple of free lessons that I'll include in this video. But otherwise, I hope to see you in the class. Link below in the description. Hit that like button and I hope to see you inside. Cheers. Welcome back guys to the next lecture. So in this lecture, we're gonna cover an overview of video formats. Now this lecture is a little bit of a leveling the playing field, making sure that going forward, we all have the same knowledge in this course as to what we mean when we say aspect ratio. Now, whether you call this aspect ratio, dimensions, layout, we're gonna to explain to you what that means. By the end of this lecture, you're gonna understand that. And also, if you think you already know the difference between layout with regards shorts and on different platforms, different social medias, don't skip just yet, because at the end, we're gonna go into depth in this lecture about what's needed for each different social media and to make sure that when you film something and it gets repurposed onto a different platform, you don't lose any of the quality of your video and you don't make any faux pas regarding that social media. You're gonna understand what aspect ratio means and how not to make any mistakes so you can use this and repurpose it across all socials. Okay, let me explain to you what the key formats for video are and what they're used for. So from a video standpoint, there are really two different types of formats overall. There is 16.9, you may call this landscape or horizontal. It's called 16.9 because it's 16 per cross by nine high. 16.9, horizontal landscape. Now this has been the main video format since, I don't know, the dawn of time. Think about movies, think about TV, think about your laptop screen, much like you're seeing on the screen behind me here and probably how you're viewing this right now. 16.9 horizontal. Now this is the main format for regular YouTube videos and also some Facebook posts too, but this is the short film school. Let's talk about the format for short. Now the second format is the complete opposite. It is 9.16 or vertical or portrait, called so because it is nine across by 16 high. Now until recently, I'm talking in the last five years or so with the rise of mobile devices, this has become the main way to view video, much like the shorts you're seeing behind me on the screen right now. Made and produced to be viewed on a vertical phone screen. And you'll see these on reels, on shorts, on all social medias from YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. So here in the Shorts Film School, when we're talking about the format that you need, the aspect ratio, the dimensions, we are talking about 9, 16 vertical made to view on mobile devices. So now we've got that clear, those are the two main video formats in existence today. Who knows what's gonna be in the future? But those two are here for a while. There are also other aspect ratios such as 1, 1, that square that were favored for a while on Facebook posts or 4, 5 that are used for posts on things like Instagram. We won't get too much into that. We don't need to worry. For this course, you don't need to worry. We're gonna show you how to produce 9, 16 content that can also fit either square or 4, 5 depending on where this also gets repurposed to. That's right, as we've mentioned in the opening videos, this is the short film school, meaning we are gonna shoot everything in vertical portrait if you like and then if this does get repurposed onto other platforms for example on Instagram if you post a reel and then it also goes to your post and someone views on your post they're gonna see that in four five so we're gonna make sure that when you create your vertical if someone is also viewing it in four or five they don't miss any of the details so we don't put anything important at the top or at the bottom so that if it gets cropped entirely or on some platforms like YouTube Shorts, when they put the title on the bottom, we don't lose any of the key information that we're trying to get across, either in the visual that we're showing or if we put text on the videos ourselves, it doesn't overlap and confuse the viewer. So you can ultimately create one video and repurpose this across all platforms, no matter where the viewer is viewing. Now alongside format, we're also gonna talk about what's needed for each of the different platforms, what's needed for the best chance of success. We're gonna call this, I call this, best practices. Best practices for every single platform. But there is a way still to create one video with all this in mind to be able to repurpose. We'll get into that in this course. And to clarify, I'm going to be covering shorts, reels, posts. Think about shorts when we talk about shorts and what I'm covering as longer form videos. I mean longer than stories. 
They are one minute in length and they are standalone content, entire stories often, and these stay permanently on your channel or your profile. They are a representation of you as a brand, as a creator, they are permanent. That's what I'm covering, shorts, reels. Depending on the platform we're talking about, they're gonna be called something different, shorts or reels. Get into that in a second. Now, Phil is gonna be covering stories. Stories, and depending on the platform, change in length too, how long they can be, and how long they stay on your profile for. Either 24 hours, up to seven days. They are not content that stays with your channel, and so they serve a different purpose. Get into that later in the course. And to clarify once again, I'm covering shorts, which on YouTube, they're called shorts. If you're on Instagram or Facebook, TikTok, let's call these reels. And feel stories, called the same thing, ease for us across all social media and platforms. Both vertical, both 916 portrait, we're gonna cover it all. Now you also have two choices here as to where you create and edit these, whether you edit inside app or whether you create this externally on a different piece of editing software and upload that. That's all coming up, that's coming up later. So now, hopefully you are fully familiar with the different aspect ratios, video formats, and what they might be called on different platforms and what we're discussing. To summarize, we're talking about 916 format. We're probably gonna to refer to this as vertical, occasionally portrait, but that's what we mean. We're covering both long form verticals, that's up to one minute and permanently stay, on your channel, we call these long form. They are shorts or reels and I'll be covering them. We are also covering stories. Again, probably up to 60 seconds or so, depending on what Bill decides and they last only a limited time on your channel or profile, 24 hours, seven days, depending on platform, Phil will talk about this. But I think the biggest thing you have to take away from here, now you know the aspect ratio and what we're talking about so there's no confusion. When we talk about making a great short, the perfect short, a short or story that can be used across different platforms, we are talking about probably the same thing that's been said since the dawn of time. We need a great story, a gripping story and something that somebody wants to watch, engage with, keep watching, share it and watch something next time you post based on how good your last story was. We're gonna be concentrating on making the ultimate snappy short that's amazing that everybody, everybody wants to watch. So to do that, we need to have a channel, something we're gonna create about, which you guys are probably thinking about yourselves. What am I gonna create? What am I gonna create about? Maybe you have an idea, maybe you don't. I'm gonna get into that in the very next lecture where we're gonna be creating our mock channel. I'll tell you what it's about, because that will dictate what I research, how I research, what I create, what my creations look like and everything going forward. And you're gonna be able to transfer these skills when I come up with a mock project, when we both have this channel, Phil and I, that we're discussing and how we research that, you'll be able to do the same for your niche, whatever you decide that is. And I'm gonna show you exactly, exactly how to do that in the very next lecture. Welcome back to the next lecture. So as promised, in this lecture, we are gonna show you our mock channel that we have developed. This is showing you our channel and also how you can develop yours. You'll see, and we need this channel so you can see how it is that we research and then how we execute on production and what we include, don't include, and the style in which we film with a channel in mind. Watching this and what we do and the plan we have is gonna be transferable for you for whatever channel you come up with and you are creating for. They're transferable skills in research and production to any niche out there. Side note, if you haven't yet decided on a niche or a channel trend type, whatever it is, if you haven't decided on what you're gonna create yet, before I get into showing you ours, I've got some tips for you on how you can decide what you create about. I've got five, five main points for you to think about. Okay, rule number one, number one, and this is really important, do not only create a channel because you think it has the highest earning potential or that it's a trend and you think it'll get picked up purely because it's a trend or earning potential. Do not do it just based on earnings. That's because number two, you're gonna have to create a lot of content, a heck of a lot for a long time around whatever it is you decide to make a channel around. Now, if you create something, I don't know, an example, in the finance niche, because we know that on YouTube and other platforms, 
finance videos have a great CPM and RPM. That's the amount of money that you get per 1000 views of adverts on your channel. They have a really high CPM RPM. If you have no interest whatsoever in the finance niche, do not create it because you have to create so much content and you have to obsess over what it is you're creating about and time and time again create, you're soon gonna lose steam. Tenacity is key here in content creation and if you're creating about something you're not passionate about and love, People are gonna see that, they're gonna feel it the other side of the camera, and you personally, for creating content, are gonna be hindered. It's not going to be easy. Now, of course, number three, number step number three, if you are an authority on a subject, if you are an authority on a subject, then of course, and if you love it because of step number two, you have to love this too, create a channel around that. If you're an authority on real estate in XYZ, if you are an authority on finance, Bitcoin, investment, if you're an authority in baking, cooking, if you're an authority on something, if there is something that you do either for a living or a passion that you know a lot about, of course, create your channel about that. You already know the niche and the content needed inside out. There is very little research needed from a standpoint of information because you're already an authority. Also, it adds integrity behind your channel. If you are in a real world scenario doing what it is that you're creating videos around, people are going to like that and they're gonna see it, they're gonna understand it and they're gonna feel it from your content. So create, if you love it, big brackets there, if you love it, create content if you are an authority on a topic about that topic. And point number four, just quickly, if you are not an authority, but you have an interest or a passion, learning or discovering about that interest can actually be your channel. For example, if you do wanna navigate the world of crypto, baking, learning a software, people also have an interest and will want to follow along with someone learning that interest. If you're not an authority, but looking to discover, make the discovery your channel. And step number five, when you come up with your niche, if you like, your theme, the genre of your channel, you need to tighten that niche for social media a lot. For example, if you like cooking, that's great, that's a theme, that's kind of a genre. You can't just have an all-round cooking channel. Eventually, sure, but let me explain to you really briefly why. Let's take the example of YouTube. You create a video around baking cakes, because that's what you like, and you put it out there and people watch it, they subscribe, they like it, they like your content about cakes in the cooking niche. Now on your next one, you create a video about cooking steak or meats or something completely different, and YouTube at first are gonna then put that video out there to the people that last watched your content, the people that viewed it, people that liked it, subscribed, they're gonna show those guys first. Now they liked a baking video about cakes. That's what they watched last time. This time you put it out, they might not care about that. Their interest was baking cakes. That's what they're interested in. Now those people don't view, don't watch, don't like that next video that comes out and YouTube deems this content not good. It says, well, if the people that watched the channel last time watched their previous video, didn't like this one, this isn't a great video. I'm not gonna give it more impressions. Then you don't get wider impressions out there into the rest of the YouTube space, the people that may have liked that content. Now, it may be that eventually you get more impressions. It's gonna be a lot slower when you first launch a video. That's YouTube deeming whether to give you impressions or not. There's something like 30,000 hours of content uploaded to YouTube every day or something ridiculous, maybe even more than that. How do they know what it is to put in front of people? It's gonna be based on your previous viewers' activity, whether they deem this video good or not. So that's an obvious example as to why it didn't work. There was a niche, there was a theme, there was a genre, sure it was cooking, and then one video did well and then the next one not so much because you're not giving the viewer the same thing every single time. So you need to niche down. Now eventually when you have lots and lots of subscribers and viewers and YouTube has a lot of good karma associated with you, that your content you create is good, it has a long watch time, a lot of people like it, then you can start broadening in out into other niches within niches. You can go for the cooking and if you've been doing cakes, then going to other things. Once you have a following, they will come and watch anything you put out because they trust your content and YouTube trusts it to give it impressions. They know you create good stuff. But at first, we need to niche down. So if you're doing baking videos, baking cakes, every single time when you launch, you create a video, make it around 
that. I did see a baking channel who did a really good example about this just recently that only did tiny cakes. That's a niche of cooking, the niche of baking, baking cakes, tiny cakes. They made miniature cakes and people watched to see how they created these tiny cakes. That's a perfect example of niching down. So take what it is, take what it is that you want to create a content about and then niche down, niche down, niche down. And these are your first videos you put out there onto your platform so you get the same people making a similar style of content each time and you build a rapport around that tight niche. Do that five steps. So for example, for our channel, I'm going to go into it and show you uh, what our channel is about in a moment. We're going to do about food. That was great. We're going to do about food, eating out. We niched that down even more and did street food. Street food is a great trend and tag. Also, it's something that we love about. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about this in a moment, but it's niching down into that trend into that sub niche inside food. So street food, if you're not familiar, that's food you get out on the street. I live in Asia, so I'm able to go out and find street food. Phil, living in the US, there are many street food carts and things that are out there. And also for takeaway and ordering in street food style food, it's a great trend. A lot of people like it. Everyone can relate. So our niche down within the food genre was street food. And that is what we're going to do. So here is our design for our channel. This is street food. Let me make that a bit bigger back here while I discuss it. I told you we're making a channel about street food. We followed all the rules. Are we an authority on it? No, but I eat it every single day here in Asia and so does Phil. Do we love it? Yes, absolutely. Phil's made content about food and cooking before. It's a passion of mine. It's something we don't mind creating content about and we have access to the content available to. That's another thing. Don't create a channel about something if you don't have access to discuss it. I know people that want to do tech reviews, but then don't have the budget or the means to get in a lot of different tech to review in person. Make what you can create about. We can create about this. We took our niche of food and we niched down into street food. That is what we're doing. So this right here is our logo, the street food channel. Very simple, very clear, exactly what you're gonna get every single time you watch a video on the street food channel. This logo also now allows us to have our branding behind it. So we've got the dark gray in the background. We've got this kind of burnt orange uh, that's our main color and also white is on there too. And the font that's at the top and the bottom is a font called Fat Frank. I'm gonna talk about this later, but we're gonna use that text. I'll use that if I ever put it over the top of any shorts or anything to keep branding in check with whatever it is I create. Now your logo you create and your branding around it says a lot more about your channel perhaps than anything else. And it's a great place to have this kind of consistency through image to keep checking in with yourself. We wanted a laid back type of channel. It can now have be fun, it can be funny, it's not strict, it's non-corporate, and that's exactly what our logo does with stuff like the font, uh, the coloring, the way it looks. It connotes a laid back feel, non-corporate. If we'd had a more structured, rigid kind of logo, it wouldn't connote the same thing. Also, of course, it's circular, which is great for, for any profile images that you want. And there's the small bowl at the bottom there, which is pretty much telling you where you're gonna get some uh, Asian food there, which I'll be doing in the videos later on in this course. Make sure you stick around to check out the videos we create. And once again, that kind of roughness, that sketchiness around the logo, which just lets you know this is laid back, fun, chilled. You can imagine this logo if we'd straightened it up, if we'd have made it white, black, blue, red, a real rigid kind of corporate kind of look that you may have expected way more of an info style videos presented much like the videos you're watching right now, which we didn't want to have with our channel. Now I created this right here inside Photoshop. If you do not have the skills to do this yourself in Photoshop or in anything similar like Canva, I'm going to show you real quickly now how to get one of those created online for not much money at all. And it's great to have, like I said, as a constant reference back to your channel for branding, coloring and overall feel. So I'm going to do this with you right here. I'm going to screen record. So I'm on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, which a lot of you will probably be aware of. It's a site made for freelancers, predominantly in the design space, but also uh, in all kind of uh, job sectors. And it started because you used to be able to get a job done for a fiver. Now that doesn't mean that everything on here is $5, five pounds, five euros, 
wherever you're watching from, they vary in price and I'm gonna show you. So if you wanted a logo made, I would just come up here and type logo. And we can search and instantly you can see there are loads of people offering all kinds of different logos. You will see inside their kind of individual profiles what they've created before. So you can scroll through and see if it fits what it is that you're kind of talking about, whether it makes sense for you or not. Uh, and I'm gonna show you at the top here so you can then rank this down by, I don't know, budget. If you had a budget and you wanna do under 30 bucks, or you can put them in here uh, to say what your overall budget is for this. You can also uh, do seller details, which is a good one, because you can have top rated sellers and level one. So these are people that have got a lot of good feedback from other people that have used their services, which is always a good indication of the quality you're going to get, as opposed to just looking through their profiles, because for all you know, they didn't create the logos that are on their profiles. So feedback is a good one. Also, depending on the country you're in and the language you speak, you wanna select them to be able to speak English. You can communicate back and forth with them, giving them examples. And you can also select where the seller lives. Now, obviously, in uh, Western countries, the USA, the UK, European countries, Canada, Australia, the services are gonna cost you more because it costs more for people to live in those regions, so they're gonna charge more for their services. It doesn't always mean the quality is gonna be better. Of course, a designer could be amazing whether they're in Pakistan, India, Philippines, or in the US, UK, Canada. So I would look individually, but also you're gonna get more value. If I scroll down and take, for example, here, I don't know, I've worked recently with a lot of people in the Philippines. Now, why? I've just had some great experience with people in the Philippines. Their English is amazing. I mean, their English is pretty much better than mine. So you can communicate with them flawlessly. That doesn't mean that someone in India, Pakistan, or any other region of the world doesn't speak great English. I just happen to have a great experience personally with people that I've worked with in the Philippines. And you're probably gonna see that the cost is a lot lower, $10, $20, although some higher too but it takes some time to go through and find someone that you want to create a logo for your channel. They can end you a logo, they can do you channel art if you're going onto YouTube and things, and you can get everything done by a professional, very low cost, if you don't already have the skills to do that yourself. So now we have our channel idea, we went through the steps, we have our channel logo, which is helping us with either the branding in video that we use, and also gives us an overview of the feel of what our videos are gonna be like. This will dictate a lot with regards our planning and execution when we go through to look at what other people in our niche are doing to be able to find the right kind of channels to see what they've done that went well and what perhaps we should be doing. So our research into our execution of production so the only other part now is to work out what is the purpose of our videos. Are they to entertain? Are they to inform? Are they part of a wider funnel? Are we sending people to sites to purchase something, for example, which lots of you might be thinking about? Or are they to try and entertain and then monetize from those platforms, making money on YouTube, for example, to have affiliate links to other products below our videos? Are they to try and get brand deals eventually? We're gonna talk about what is the purpose of your video because that will dictate what your videos look like and what you're saying them, basically. We'll talk about that in the first video in the planning section. But first, first we need to talk about the equipment that you need. So Phil is gonna do the majority of the next section. He's gonna talk about the equipment he uses, different equipment you might already have that you might need, depending on what your needs are for creating. And then I'll show you the equipment that I use. So on to the next section, let's talk about equipment.